I'm glad to welcome you in a new video about the mountain bike simulator MTB game. In this video I will tell you how to install, run, set controls, play and change graphics settings in the simulator. To simplify navigation through the video, sections, time codes are presented on the screen. You downloaded the MTB game demo install .exe. To install it, you just need to double-click on it, allow Windows Security System to run the executable file and select the installation directory. The game will be unpacked into the selected directory and will work in it locally without leaving other traces in the operating system. To successfully launch the game, make sure that you have installed a more or less new driver from the vendor of your GPU. To do this, go into the Device Manager and find the section Display Adapters. Open the list of video adapters and in the context menu of GPU select Properties. The driver tab contains all information about the video driver. Make sure that the driver creation date is not very old and the driver vendor corresponds to the vendor of your video card. In our case, this is NVIDIA. If the driver is older than several years or the vendor doesn't match the vendor of your video card, you need to download the new driver from the vendor's website and install it. Just in case, make sure that the system has no settings that prevent to launch of OpenGL applications on the GPU. For example, in the NVIDIA control panel, there may be a number of such settings. This can be OpenGL rendering GPU and power management mode. Often, for laptops, the mode of maximum performance should be chosen. The settings may be different for different video card vendors and driver versions. But if there are problems with the launch of the game, you should look at them to make sure that they don't prevent the game from running on your main GPU. If you have a joystick, joypad, steering wheels or pedals that you want to use in the game, make sure that they are connected in advance before starting the game. Now that everything has been verified, you can run the game. We allow the operating system to start the application and wait. And the first thing to do after the game is loaded is to set up controls. This can be done in the main menu settings. Here you can configure five main control channels and several other actions. To associate a specific action with a button or axis of the joystick, you must click on the action button which lights up in green. After that you can press a button on a keyboard or joystick and for channels also move the joystick in the direction of the desired axis. The name of the assigned button or axis will appear in the corresponding field. For different actions you can assign the same buttons or axis. You can also invert the axis direction by pressing the minus one button. Let's consider the main control channels. Pedaling force is the force with which the rider turns paddles. This channel can be assigned to the button to increase and decrease force and the axis of the joystick or pedal. When pedaling, the rider tries to maintain the optimum cadence for him. If the established force is not enough for this, then he will change the transmission gear to a lighter one. And if the cadence increases too much, he will on the contrary switch to a heavier gear. The current value of the pedaling channel is displayed in the information line of the simulation window. Incline forward and backward. It's recommended to assign a joystick axis for this channel. Using this channel you can tilt the rider's body back and forth. If this is done too quickly you can even knock out the bike. This channel is most often used when jumping and landing on drops and jumps. You can also control this channel by moving the mouse forward and backward with the right button pressed. Move upward and downward is rider squatting and rising. If the free joystick axis exists, it can be assigned to this channel. Otherwise, button will be enough. This channel is used to pump or swallow the terrain relief. This can be useful both on bumps and on kickers and landings. Turn right and left. This channel is the main one. Therefore, it's important to assign the joystick axis for it and not the buttons. This channel controls the steering indirectly through the balancing system. This channel must be used in case you need to turn right or left. 
The channel can also be controlled by moving the mouse left and right with the right button pressed. Shifting right and left, a channel that is only partially implemented in the demo version and is partially not used. It should tilt the rider independently of the bike. For now, you can assign any buttons or access to this channel or not assign at all. To cancel an assignment already made, just left click on the assignment field that you want to cancel. You can try to assign the same access to this channel as for turning left and right, but invert it. This will call the rider to try to tilt the body out of the turn, front and rear brake. You can assign on axis or button to each. Often there are two separate analog buttons on the game part that are well suited for brakes. You can assign these buttons to both brakes. If there is no desire to control the brakes separately, then it's permissible to use the same button or axis for them. Braking is one of the most frequent actions on a mountain bike, so make sure that you feel comfortable braking while controlling other channels. The front brake is more efficient and often only it is used for braking. Rear brake also allows you to run a bike in a skid. Do not brake too hard with the front brake, especially if most of the weight of the rider is already on the front wheel. In addition to the rider, you can control the camera. You can assign keyboard or joystick buttons to control the camera. Following things can be adjusted. Right and left turn, up and down turn, as well as zoom in and zoom out, or camera field of view. If the use mouse with left button is active, then you can control the turns of the camera with the mouse while holding the left button. You can also select a button to switch cameras and pause. Since input controllers can have different shapes, the number and location of the axis, unambiguous recommendations on the choice of a convenient control scheme cannot be given. However, let's see which scheme turned out to be the most convenient for my classic Logitech joypad. Increase pedaling force. Reduce pedaling force. Incline forward and backward. Move upward and downward. Turn right and left. Incline right and left, front brake, rear brake. It's convenient to rotate the camera with the mouse to zoom in and out with the arrows on the keyboard and the joystick buttons. To change the camera and pose, also buttons of the keyboard and joystick. When control with your controller or controllers is configured, you can proceed to the game itself. Missions and free play are sections that will be implemented in the full version and they don't contain anything interesting except for attractive pictures. The demo version of the game is centered around the mountain bike school, NTB school. There are nine lessons of varying duration and difficulty. They are ordered from simple to complex, from driving on a flat asphalt road to drops, jumps and wooden bridges. The final lesson is a long downhill course containing berms, gaps, tables, wooden bridges, drops, roots, stones and steep sections. Each lesson can be passed on three different assessments – satisfactory, good and excellent. Without passing one lesson, at least satisfactorily, one cannot proceed to the next. For each lesson, there is a description of the goal, the main tasks that must be performed to obtain the required mark, and a detailed description of what and how to deal with the lesson. The description of the first lesson also reveals some details of the interface and gameplay. Information about the status of the passing of each lesson is available below. Consider the first lesson. Its goal is to make you familiar with the controls, interface, riding on a straight asphalt road, and speed control. To get a satisfactory mark, you just need to drive the track to the finish. For good mark, it's required to follow all speed limits, and for excellent mark, to keep within 1 minute 40 seconds. Let's start the lesson by clicking on the Go button. After the loading window and the 3 second timer, our rider begins to write. Click Pause to get better acquainted with the control of the camera and the interface of the simulation window. The camera is controlled as it was configured in the settings menu. The game has four different cameras. 
The first is located in the rider's chest area. The second looks from the position of his eyes. The third camera can be located on any side of the bike and turns after it. The fourth one can also watch the bike from any side, but it doesn't turn along with the bike. Each of the cameras can be rotated, zoomed in and out. For the first and second cameras, instead of zooming in and out, change in the field of view are used. Let's look at the information line above. It displays useful information. Time elapsed from the beginning of the mission, the current speed in kilometers per hour, the value of the pedaling channel, front and rear brakes. In addition, the time step parameter is displayed. For stable physical simulation, this value is required to be less than 0.5. If this value is greater, then you can still play, but a stable walk is not guaranteed. Choosing the most convenient camera for us and studying the information line, we will continue the lesson. We will not pretend to be a nerd and will ignore the speed limit signs. Turn on the maximum pedaling force. The first mission doesn't require the use of all control channels. Pedaling force, brakes and turns will be enough. The rider fell in the turn, although it was unexpectedly. This is fairly typical situation. We turned with the pedaling channel turned on and when the bike was tilted, we kicked the road with pedal. If the impact was strong enough, then the fall cannot be avoided. Therefore, in case of turning with significant inclination, the pedaling channel should be turned off. The fact that the pedals still rotate tells us the missing sound of the rear hub and the value of the pedaling channel in the information line. Press the escape button. The rewind tool will appear below. It allows you to return time to any moment in the past by dragging the slider. To continue the game from the selected moment, you must click on the Rewind to Time button. It is also possible to return to the game for the last moment by clicking Return to Race. You can exit the lesson by clicking on Return to Menu and restart the lesson using the Restart Mission button. The Rewind tool can be used an unlimited number of times, but each time adds 10 seconds of the penalty time to the time of the lesson. In addition, for a positive assessment, the number of rewinds in school lesson is limited. No more than 3 for a satisfactorily mark, no more than 2 for a good mark, and no more than 1 for the excellent mark. Let's go to the moment before the fall and continue the lesson. The first lesson is quite short, especially if you don't follow speed limits and do not chase a high score. With the passage of lesson, it's important to move around the track. If you go beyond the track or cut it, you will lose the finish capability. As a rule, the territory out of the track is much more bumpy, slippery and requires great effort when pedaling. Therefore, it's wiser to keep track not only in order to be able to complete the lesson, but also in order to pass the track faster. And the finish is indicated by a white and black stripe with a checkerboard button. To complete any of the lessons, you must cross this stripe. Further, any fall, stop and exit from the trail are allowed. Within a few seconds after crossing the finish line, information will appear about how you went through the lesson. Here you can either repeat the lesson again or return to the menu. For the passage of other lessons, carefully read their description and practice. You can walk out individual elements of the track using the Rewind tool. It is possible to configure some of the graphics settings in the game using the system file graphicsettings.txt. Consider what settings this file allows us to produce and how they influence the graphics in the game. The parameter Render Grass allows you to enable or disable the display of the grass. Each blade of grass is drawn separately, so turning off the grass can significantly increase game performance. The tree level of detail allows you to choose which level of detail will be used when displaying trees. If the value is 0, all levels are used, and if the value is from 1 to 4, the corresponding level is used. The default value is 0, but if the change of detail levels distract or annoys you, 
you can choose to use any one level. Visibility distance is a parameter that determines the distance at which objects are visible. The minimum value of 1 allows you to improve performance, while a value of 20 allows you to see object as far as possible. The default value is 10. Ground geo quality determines how many polygons are used to represent the ground. Three options are possible. 1, 2 or 3. The default value is 2. Full screen allows you to select whether to use full screen or windowed mode. And the screen resolution value determines the screen resolution. A value of 0 corresponds to the resolution of the desktop. Any other resolution must be explicitly indicated. And if it is not supported, then closest one will be selected, which is supported. Don't forget to save the graphics settings file before launching the game so that the new settings are used. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.